Hello everyone, this is Eva Nolik smith with Yoga You Online and I am here with Dr. Baxter Bell, originally trained as an MD. Uh, Baxter, you fell in love with yoga some time back and you decided to actually leave your medical practice and become a full-time yoga teacher. Yeah. And that's now some 20 years ago? Uh, 15 years ago. 15 years ago, yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting, I, I did, I left my family practice career behind. Uh, I brought my family practice knowledge with me, which has been really good. And of course, I, I still actually see people as a medical acupuncturist in which I incorporate some of that wisdom into the way that I work with folks. Yes, yeah, and you are also uh, author and co-founder of the Health, Yoga for Healthy Aging blog. Uh, with Nina Zolotov, which you guys are doing an amazing work, kind of highlighting, you know, the the aspects of yoga, and not just the therapeutic yoga aspects, but also how you know the many different ways yoga can, can help us retain quality of life as as we get older. Yeah. Um, and Baxter is also a teacher at Yoga U Online. We are very honored to have Baxter as a teacher for several of our online courses on the applications of yoga for healthy aging. And if you would like to practice with Baxter online, be sure to check out Baxter's videos in our online practice channel. Very exciting. Yes, <laughs> some great healthy aging videos there as well. Now, Baxter, today uh, the topic of our discussion is metabolic syndrome and the applications of yoga for metabolic syndrome. And metabolic syndrome is a somewhat newer concept that has only entered medical awareness within the last 10, 20 years. Yeah, yeah, more formally for sure. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, you know, you could find little inklings of the idea going back 40, 50, 60 years sometimes, but it's really in the last 10 or 20 years that it's come forward as an idea that's being used by doctors to make decisions with patients about their care and their lifestyle and things like that. So it is kind of relatively new concept in that sense. So um, let's start from the beginning and just, if you don't mind, just tell us exactly what metabolic syndrome is because it's not just one thing it's several things is that correct right it is several things so a, you know first of all a syndrome is one of these words that's really interesting in the medical literature it can be an actual disease so some diseases we have like uh, um, aids for instance um, is actually a well-known disease and we know what causes it now we know the virus that causes it uh, but there are other syndromes out there like chronic fatigue syndrome and other things like that where it's not quite so clear what the underlying cause of this constellation of consistent signs and symptoms that a person might have uh, that that then they get assigned this name oh I have this particular syndrome going on with me so in metabolic syndrome uh, the way it's defined is you have to have three of four particular factors that show up in your life to qualify you as having metabolic syndrome and those include a certain kind of uh, obesity, a very specific kind of obesity, um, having something called prediabetes, and, uh, and of course in our course we'll talk about this in pretty good detail, something called prehypertension, and also some abnormalities with your cholesterol numbers. So those four different factors, if you have three of the four, then you're said to have metabolic syndrome. Now you could have all four of those things going on and you might feel actually perfectly fine. You might not have any symptoms that you have ill health. Sure, if, you're, if you have the obesity, you might realize that you're overweight, but you might be able to go to work and do all the things that you do on a daily basis. And it might not be actually interfering with some of the basics of your life. So this is why some of these syndromes and some of these conditions are challenging for individuals who are told that they have them when they go to see their doctor. Because they might actually feel okay, and yet they leave the office with this new thing, this new name assigned to them. It could be tricky, yeah? Yeah, and of course, the reason doctors are even paying attention to these factors is there is a link with 
three or four of the biggest killers of our time? Heart disease? Well, there's defi stroke? definitely two for sure. And some other authors and writers will include other conditions as well. But two things we can say for sure. If you have metabolic syndrome, you're going to be at higher risk for developing type 2 diabetes within a short period of time, within yeah. as, as little as two to five years. So there's that risk. And, and as soon as you have type 2 diabetes firmly established in your body, you usually don't feel as well as normal. You're probably going to have some symptoms and you're going to notice some things are going on with you. And of course, then the other major condition that's related to having metabolic syndrome is it increases your ch chance of cardiovascular disease much more dramatically than if you don't have metabolic syndrome. So it, it bumps up your risk of having heart attacks and strokes if you have metabolic syndrome already. Now, there even seems to be some indication, in some, according to some physicians out there, that it might put you at higher risk also for things like cancers as well. Uh, maybe not as clearly, and even dementia might even be in there as well. And keep in mind that people who have diabetes, as an example, so you have metabolic syndrome, you don't have diabetes yet, but it puts you at higher risk for, for developing diabetes. Say you do develop diabetes, and then you're at higher risk for little micro strokes, little baby strokes that people with diabetes sometimes get over time, which then might contribute to dementia and Alzheimer's showing up at some point earlier than you might expect it to. So that's kind of the progression that you might see with those kinds of conditions. That makes sense. Yeah, and it's, it's really interesting because it seems like if you catch metabolic syndrome, if you develop awareness of your own risk and how to counteract your risk factors, there's a long cascade of undesirable health changes that you might be able to prevent down the road. Exactly. And you and I have talked about how yoga is so uniquely positioned as really a kind of lifestyle medicine use that catchphrase lifestyle medicine in the sense that you know when we apply our yoga practice to any number of potential problems that we have we can sometimes slow down progression of health conditions we can sometimes halt the progression sometimes we can actually turn it around and actually move from ill health to better health so and and oftentimes really it's these lifestyle choices of choosing to do yoga practices and meditation practices and breathing practices that then have very tangible benefits in our bodies over time. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So, so what are some of the factors that would indicate to people that they might have, you know, metabolic syndrome? What would people be looking at to assess their risk? Yeah. If you if you're feeling perfectly healthy and you're wondering, gosh, I wonder if I have metabolic syndrome. And you know, one of the statistics that Dr. Mark Hyman mentions in his book, uh, The Blood Sugar Solution is he, he really believes that uh, a third to a half of adult Americans are already walking around with metabolic syndrome, and they just don't know it. So it's like hypertension. Well, a little bit like hypertension, which is called the silent killer, because you might have it, but you feel fine and you don't know because you've never gone in to get it checked. Right? Right. So you've never had your blood pressure checked, and so yeah. you don't really know that it's, it could be there in the background of your awareness. So the first thing is to kind of be curious, right? To say, I wonder if I'm at risk for this particular problem, um, knowing, and we'll, we'll just kind of maybe let the cat out of the bag, knowing that there are some really good things you could do to turn it around, right? So it's not insurmountable by any means. It's not a death sentence at all. In fact, if anything, we now know that you can really influence it quite dramatically with some pretty simple choices in a way. So number one is to be curious and say, I wonder if I could have metabolic syndrome. And then you could, if you, if you know that you're a little bit overweight, you could even check to see if you fall into the category of overweight versus being obese, according to the Centers for Disease Control. They have a formula to figure out. And when we do our program next week, we'll actually look at how you can calculate that. So it's really simple, right? So you can actually do that. So you could check that out. You could say, well, I know I'm a little overweight. I wonder if I'm actually, if, I, if I'm overweight enough for that to be an actual risk factor, okay? And so that's one thing you could look at. And then the other thing you could say is, I wonder if I should just go in for my annual checkup and have my doctor check my blood sugar, check my blood pressure, and run my cholesterol numbers. Because those are the things, in a sense, that you got to check out to see if you are at risk for metabolic syndrome. Kind of pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And so when when you say that um, metabolic syndrome is is a lifestyle disease and really influenced by our lifestyle. So are we talking about the usual uh, lifestyle factors like exercise, diet, uh, rest, uh, stress levels? Is is that those are those the factors that impact the balance of um, the cluster of um, factors that make up the, the syndrome? Um, absolutely. I mean, you know, we we've already um, uh, probably on this very channel. I've had uh, talks with myself and other teachers who have talked about uh, the risk factors for cardiovascular disease, like hypertension and cholesterol numbers, uh, the risk factors for obesity. And so we know that uh, dietary choices, physical activity, um, stress management tools can all lower our risk for developing the more serious complications from, from all of those conditions. Uh, and there seems to be some evidence now that we'll get into in some detail in our program on Tuesday uh, that also uh, pre-diabetes uh, can be influenced by these same choices. Now, that doesn't mean that, um, that there isn't some genetic predisposition that might get turned on. Uh, but, you know, a lot of, you know, people sometimes think that once you hear that you're at risk for diabetes, that you're going to get it. Well, that's just not the case. You're at risk for developing it, but you can influence that. And, you know, there's the genetics of what our DNA brings into this lifetime for us. And then there's something called epigenetics, which is a topic maybe you've talked about on this uh, uh, channel before, but maybe not. Um, uh, and epigenetics is all kinds of environmental factors and uh, exposures and um, life experiences that might turn on or turn off your genetic code. And so we're now finding that our choices can actually affect the epigenetics and therefore they affect our genetics. So it's kind of a, a really lovely way of, of realizing now that, you know, things that maybe weren't talked about 20 years ago now are being talked about as being influenceable. We can actually influence these things that might cause metabolic syndrome to either worsen or improve. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, Dr. Hyman, of course, um, is one of the MDs that have has worked the most with metabolic syndrome and written extensively about how it impacts our health. And he in particular focuses in on the role of balanced insulin levels in metabolic syndrome. Right. Could you talk about that and why that is considered important and what influences our insulin levels? Yeah. So, you know, some of this is getting better and better understood over time. So I'm just going to give you a little taste of this. Um, but um, when our diet, our lifestyle, and our, our body kind of combine together, lead to maybe some weight gain, some inactivity, some high stress levels the body can interpret that and this can influence the way our body utilizes sugar or nutrition that comes into our bloodstream. You know, normally we eat a healthy meal, we absorb some nutrition, the blood sugar molecules uh, trigger a reaction with the brain and the pancreas and our pancreas, which is an endocrine organ, releases some insulin into our bloodstream. And the job of the insulin is to move all that good nutrition that's in our bloodstream and take it where it needs to go to move it into our cells that are actively burning up fuel moment by moment, or to take the leftover and turn it into storage material so we can use it later on between meals when we need a little extra energy. And so what happens is the problem with, um, with, with metabolic syndrome and the insulin in particular is that the cells of our body, when we have this poor nutrition and this weight subtle gradual weight gain and this inactivity, the system doesn't respond normally. And so the blood sugar levels go up after a meal and the pancreas says, oh, I'll release some insulin. But for some reason, the cells of our body become resistant to working properly with the insulin. And so we don't end up transporting that sugar into the places it needs to go and it ends up staying in our bloodstream. And when it stays in our bloodstream, the higher levels of sugar over time can lead to undesirable side effects in our bodies. 
So it's, it doesn't all happen at once. It happens gradually. So the sugar levels are high in the bloodstream. The pancreas goes, oh my God, I got to put out more insulin because there's sugar that needs to go into the cells, but the cells aren't responding. They're resistant to that insulin. And so, you know, some of it gets in, but not as much as it should get in. And so you, so then the body keeps pouring out more insulin. And so you've got this weird, and at a certain point, the insulin becomes very ineffective. And then you got to get some outside help. And that's when people have developed diabetes, full-blown type 2 diabetes. And then the doctor has to say, well, we got to add some, some medications and some tools in to help your body lower those blood sugar levels. But, but the medicines don't actually address the underlying issue, which is often the inactivity and the weight gain and the stress. And so you get all these medicines that can, yes, lower the blood sugars. And on some level, that's beneficial in the short run. But again, it doesn't deal with the underlying issue. So you can actually reverse even type 2 diabetes with the proper set of tools. But if we only, only limit ourselves to the pharmacologic level, then sometimes we don't necessarily address the underlying issue as effectively as we could. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And, and you said earlier on that yoga has some um, really great applications in efforts to prevent metabolic syndrome. Um, so what is the specific connection there? Which are the different ways that yoga could impact these different cluster risk factors? Is it the stress, you know, the stress management applications? Is it the exercise? Yeah, you know, which, which are the connections you're drawing there? It's probably not going to be just one thing. It's going to probably affect the, your whole body, the holistic you on many levels. Uh, it's going to definitely, if it does address your stress and you become better at managing your stress via your yoga practices, that's going to have a wonderful effect on the whole system of the body. If you um, uh, start address, if the asana practice becomes an adequate form of exercise for you, we know that exercise improves hypertension. We know that it improves uh, sugar control because it actually helps to burn up some of that sugar that's floating around in the bloodstream. The body picks it up more effectively and utilizes it more effectively. So it can help with prediabetes. It can help, help with prehypertension. Um, it also seems that regular exercise can uh, change the balance of the different cholesterol molecules in your bloodstream so that you get a healthy balance and not an unhealthy balance of those molecules. Um, and um, it can affect the obesity, obviously, by affecting weight loss. We've got a few studies now that show that yoga can actually influence weight loss. And if you remember, there was a study a couple years ago that showed that even doing a surprisingly gentle practice, a restorative yoga practice, seemed to influence obesity on a certain level. And we'll talk about in our program, I don't want to get into too much detail because we're going to cover it in pretty good detail next week, but it turns out that even the, um, there's some evidence through several recent studies that were done in the Bay Area uh, in San Francisco and also in San Diego, um, that the restorative practices might influence blood sugar levels in a positive way. So we're learning more. I'm sure we'll learn more about the biochemistry of how yoga is influencing the body as time goes on. We're getting little insights with some of the recent studies. But there is this potential, as we've seen in so many other conditions, that yoga has kind of a global benefit on the whole system of a person. And really, when you think about metabolic sy sy syndrome, it's like the whole system is getting out of balance. It's a little yeah. bit difficult to know, you know what came first, the chicken or the egg in some in instances. But you know, yoga is this way of rebalancing our system in, in some beautiful ways. And therefore, it has the potential to have a positive influence on metabolic syndrome. Mm, that's beautiful. And of course, you're teaching a course on Yoga U on metabolic syndrome and more specifically how, you know, the different applications of yoga and, you know, how to approach perhaps preventing it with, with yoga. Uh, so, and you already touched uh, some on what you will be covering, but tell us a bit more about the course and how you plan to approach the topic. So I, I, I hope to go into a little more detail and really leave you really clearly understanding the, the four factors that make up metabolic syndrome through the, through the course of talking about this in our upcoming sessions. Um, and so we'll really look at prediabetes a little more closely. We'll look at 
prehypertension. What does that mean, really? And we'll look at the cholesterol abnormalities that you might see. So you have a better idea of what you're looking for when you're going to talk to your family doc, if you decide to do that. And talk about this kind of unique kind of obesity that that actually puts you at much higher risk than other kinds of obesity. So not all obesity is created equal. So we're going to go through that, give you some tools to understand yourself a little bit better and investigate that a little bit better. <clears throat> and then I also want to take some time and actually look at these three recent studies that were done on yoga and metabolic syndrome. And what did the researchers do? How many people were involved? What kind of results did they get? And, you know, how can we start to think about that and, 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 say, and, and take, have some take-home messages from those specific studies. And then we might also look at other studies that might just deal with each of the four factors separate from the idea of metabolic syndrome, because I think that also still has some relevance. So we're gonna look at some of the science behind what is metabolic syndrome and how does yoga perhaps influence that. And then finally, we'll look at some of the yoga tools that we have in our toolbox. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, a restorative yoga practice could be beneficial for metabolic syndrome. But what metabol what uh, restorative poses did they actually use in the studies? Good news, I know exactly what they used. And I had the good fortune of talking to one of the yoga teachers who was part of those studies. So um, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll actually introduce you to her, and I'll share with you some of the information that she shared with me in a recent conversation that we had. And she also was kind enough to get some information from the doctor who organized the study. Said, well, and I'll share with you some of that insider information as well. And then we'll also expand beyond what those studies looked at, because they really were looking at a very narrow practice of yoga. And I hope to share with you my thoughts on how the other major tools of our practice, the breath work, and the meditation techniques, and the more active physical practices, and how those can be applied also for those of you that want to influence your chances of developing metabolic syndrome or trying to turn it around if you happen to be in that fairly large group of people, 30 to 50% of Americans, adult Americans, who might already have metabolic syndrome and just don't know it. And this is really not, and you know, I really want you to, I want to, I want you to come away from this actually feeling empowered not fearful of this condition, but really having a better understanding of what it is and the fact that it might increase your chances of problems down the road and know that, oh, you actually have something you can do right now to turn things around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and marvelously so because, you know, as you said, it's not just heart disease, it's not just diabetes, it's not just stroke risk but potentially this whole fallout of increased risk of dementia, Alzheimer's, and cancer. So, You know, when you think about it, Eva, it's really all of the chronic diseases of the Western modern world. It's all of those things that, you know, because we live longer in a sense, you know, and we've had all these technological advances in food and whatnot, that, you know, these are kind of our modern health problems. And so many of them, it turns out, we can actually influence quite dramatically. Yeah, just by the simple act of restoring balance. Yeah, and yoga is a beautiful way to do that. Yes, wonderful. Well, Baxter, thank you so much for joining us and sharing uh, of your wealth of knowledge. I know we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg and uh, we very much look forward to your course. Great, I look forward to seeing some of you out there too. Thanks. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.